Hi, welcome to Riverbed Support Channel. My name is Siva Sankar Subaya, and today we are going to see how to configure secure transport between steelheads. So, what is secure transport? Secure transport is a group encryption method for path selection deployments in RIOS. It allows you to protect data transmitted between steelheads over private, public, and hybrid network links with standards based encryption for added security and regulatory compliance. Secure Transport uses security based on AES-256 and SHA-2 to secure traffic over a path. Guidelines when you configure Secure Transport First and foremost point, you must have path selection deployed on the steelheads to use Secure Transport. Secure Transport requires an SSL license. You must configure networks and sites before you begin configuring Secure Transport. When you define networks, you specify which networks are secure. You must configure application policies before you begin configuring Secure Transport. Only physical in-path deployments are supported. Virtual in-path deployments are not supported. In RIOS 9.0 or later, IPsec Secure Pairing and the Secure Transport Service are mutually exclusive. You can't configure both of them. The Secure Transport Service is enabled by default on Steelheads. Before you enable IPsec Secure Pairing on the Steelhead, you must disable the secure transport service on the steelhead. Flow statistics collectors such as NetFlow can collect encapsulating security payload packet data flow information. Lastly, steelhead must be present on both the endpoints of the path. Please note, traffic is double encrypted only when both secure transport and SSL secure pairing are enabled. Okay, what are the appliances involved in secure transport configuration? First, you need steel central controller for steelhead which is SCC to configure the secure transport settings. You can't configure the secure transport settings individually on the steelheads. At least two steelheads fully managed by steel central controller for steelhead showing us connected. Now terminologies used in secure transport. Secure transport controller and secure transport client. Please keep in mind that the secure transport controller is different from steel central controller. We will see in detail about secure transport controller in next slides. What is Secure Transport Controller? We will see that in detail in following slides. A Secure Transport Controller is a centralized service deployed on a reachable steelhead. The steelhead typically resides in the data center and manages the control channel and operations required for the secure transport between steelhead peers. The control channel between the steelhead uses SSL to secure the connection between the peer steelheads and the steelhead Secure Transport Controller. The Secure Transport Controller controls and manages Secure Transport key generation, distribution of local site subnets, and rekeying between Secure Transport peers. The Secure Transport Controller must be reachable by other steelhead peers. Following the previous one, few more points on the Secure Transport Controller. You must enable Secure Transport Client on all other steelhead peers in which you want Secure Transport to encrypt data. On the SCC, all the appliances that have a securable link are added to a Secure Transport group. If you do not have securable link on any steelhead, then that will not be part of a Secure Transport group. You can have only one active Secure Transport Controller in your deployment. Remember, making an available controller as active or not active in SCC is a manual process. Backup controller will not become automatically active in case the current active is not reachable. There is something called disconnected mode in Secure Transport. What is disconnected mode? When connectivity is lost between the Secure Transport controller and its PS, the PS go into disconnected mode. The last known keys and subnet information are used during the disconnected mode timeout period. Also, an alarm is raised on the steelhead pair when it enters disconnected mode. After a disconnected mode timeout, all secure transport tunnels are brought down. This can be configured through SCC. Secure transport group settings on SCC. This can be configured under Manage, Services and Secure Transport in SCC. There are five attributes. Rekey interval. This is a time after which the secure transport controller will generate new security keys and push them out to the secure transport members. Rekey data size is the total data size encrypted by all peers using a certain security key after which the secure transport controller should generate a new key. Disconnected mode timeout. The amount of time in seconds the secure transport members can operate while disconnected from the secure transport controller. Authentication algorithm is SHA-256 encryption algorithm is AES-256. That was too much of theory. No more theory. 
welcome let's begin our demo this is the network setup we are going to use in this demo for configuring secure transport between a branch of stlet and the data center stlet we have two paths between these sites path one on the top mpls atnt path two which is on the bottom mpls bt there's a windows client on the branch side and a windows server for testing purpose on the data center side for this demo we are going to secure the path mpls bt between these two sites okay let's dive on to the demo here's our network topology for this demo we will keep two providers mpls at&t and mpls bt networks i have the steelets are just configured with basic ip settings and connected to the scc and showing us healthy manage topology sites and networks we have a default network called my one i will rename the default network to mpls at&t and click apply Then create our second network which is MPLS BT. Very important to make this network as securable as we are going to secure traffic by this network. Let's go back to our network topology. As per our demo network, we have a branch site with subnet 105100 24 and a data center site with subnet 1050024. Each site has two MPLS paths, respectively MPLS AT&T and MPLS BT. For the sake of this demo, we are going to secure the traffic on MPLS BT link between these sites. All file transfer traffic should go via MPLS BT secure uplink and HTTP traffic via MPLS AT&T. Okay, on the CMC, we are in sites and networks page. Let's start creating sites. Create a branch site called Chennai. Select the branch steelhead, which is CFE in this case. Define its IP subnet which needs to be secured when it falls under a path selection rule, which instructs to go via secure link. For this branch, we have subnet 10.51.0.0.24. Click direct to internet. Keep the direct internet as that is out of scope for this demo. Now we are going to define our uplinks for the branch site. Click add new uplink, uplink 1, which is going to be on our AT&T circuit. Name the uplink, uplink primary, Get gateway IP address, which is 10.51.0.251 and interface is going to be in path 00, which is default. Enter the bandwidth values up and down. In this case, we are going to keep 30 megabits per second. Then click add second uplink, which is going to be on MPLS BT. Name it as uplink backup. Enter the gateway IP address 10510252. Select the in path interface which is going to be in path 10 which is default and we will keep the bandwidth value as 20 megabits per second up and down. Click save. Then add a site to add our data center site. We'll name it London. This is our data center. Select the appliance, enter the IP subnet, it's going to be 10.50.0.0 slash 24. So direct to internet and click add new uplink. Again it's the same, I'm going to be at and as a uplink primary. Enter the IP address 
it's on input 0 0 and bandwidth we are going to keep 100 megabits per second up and down click add new link for adding secondary one this is going to be uplink backup the gateway 1050.0.252 it is going to be on in path 10 which is default and I'll keep this bandwidth as 50 megabits per second and remember the bandwidth values only affects QoS shaping so for path selection and circuit transport without QoS you don't need to enter values here you can simply leave it default then application definitions in this demo we are going to use inbuilt applications so we are not going to create any custom application so there are inbuilt applications for file transfer as SIFs and for HTTP it's HTTP okay now we have all our sites and networks everything is ready let's go and push this configuration to these delays okay uh, we need to do uh, path selection rules to make sure the circuit transport is configured under the rules so before going to push let's go to manage path selection first thing as I said earlier path selection must be enabled and working for circuit transport to work let's create a rule with file transfer should go through our uplink backup secure you can add additional uplink types you can add maximum of three for now for the sake of demo I'm just going to just add one link so here let's select HTTP and I'm going to add this uplink primary click save okay now let's go and push this configuration include path selection okay I'm going to pass the video until it get pushed we'll resume after that okay we are back the policy push is success next step is to configure one secure transport controller on our data center stealet this step must be configured via CLI and there is no option in the stealet GUI there are only one two commands needed first we need to enable the secure transport controller service and bind its management IP address to that okay let's hop on to our data center stealet CLI these are configuration mode commands you must be in the config tip prompt to configure these first enable the stp controller service so stp dash controller enable and to bind the IP address this is the command syntax stp controller address private IP public IP and followed by the port number and for this demo I'm only going to use through pub private IP and if for any reason the STP controller has to be reachable via internet through NAT IP and port number you can optionally configure public IP and the port number for my demo just keep the private IP it must be the the management IP address of the steelhead for me the management IP address is 192.168.0.221 okay to verify the settings use the show commands show controller status and show STP controller address here we go once we configured these commands in CLI our secure transport controller will be visible on the SCC under managed services secure transport page under active secure transport controller 
select the secure transport controller and click make active to activate now our secure transport controller is active so group settings for this demo I'm going to keep all the default values I'm not going to change anything on the group settings okay now we are going to initiate a connection for file transfer from branch PC and check the current connection to make sure that the traffic is going through our secure uplink as configured I have here two hosts one client and server client is on the branch side and server is on the data center side I have the shared folder already configured on the server let's go on to the client our client IP is 10510131 and server IP is 10510131 let's go to current connection on both the streetlets filter the connections based on source and destination IP addresses currently we don't have any matching connection let's go back to the client open our share folder let's copy these files paste it go back and update the current connections page we now have a connection which is with this icon which says transport layer secured is a secure transport connection let's expand the connection here we go indeed the file transfer is secured via uplink backup secure here as well okay lastly let's try to initiate a HTTP connection and see how it goes client again cancel the session let's open a browser HTTP ten fifty zero one thirty one slash public download update the current connections page we have HTTP connection now let's expand here we go it's going via uplink primary as configured in the path selection rule you can view group traffic information in the secure transport page click manage services secure transport under the traffic information for default group view group traffic information you can edit the dates and update here we have you can view the members of the secure transport group in the secure transport page as well same page here down a green dot next to the member name indicates connected secure transport controller if it is red then that's disconnected mode this ends our demo hope the video was informative to you and please subscribe our YouTube channel thank you